This is the Oakland Podcast, featuring Morgan Brown and Michael Yu. Welcome to the Oakland Podcast. I have a very, well, we have a very special guest uh, this morning, Jeff King, the CEO of Greater Vancouver Realtors. Jeff King, welcome to the Oakland Podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. It's great to be here. Why don't you introduce yourself to uh, the listeners out there? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've uh, been the CEO of the uh, Greater Vancouver Realtors uh, since uh, November 2021. Right. Uh, uh, formerly known as the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver Absolutely. for, uh, for uh, about 50 years. Yeah. Um, uh, I joined the the, uh, the organization uh, coming from a different uh, industry in a different city. That's uh, so interesting. I, yeah. I came from the music and entertainment industry in uh, Toronto. Wow. So uh, uh, I, I did what a lot, a lot of folks do and what a lot of folks in their 50s do not do right? <laughs> is change industries and cities uh, uh, at this stage of their career. But I'm thrilled I did it and I'm yeah. thoroughly enjoying it. That's a fantastic. So um, tell us about the trajectory. So you started in the, did you start in the music industry out of your career or like what's, what's the journey like? Oh, yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, um, Jeff, I started off, off uh, uh, in the insurance and reinsurance world. Okay. And uh, and I did that for about uh 14 years or so oh, okay. and uh, had uh, some good success, w- uh, worked on a lot of really interesting things and and brought some, in, uh, what I like to think, innovative approaches to mm-hmm. handle uh, how these things operated. But uh, it was not entirely satisfying. And I was mm-hmm. getting into my mid-30s and, right. and thought, you know what, maybe I should think this through a bit. Mm-hmm. And because uh, you only have one life and there's only one yeah. opportunity to really sort of live through it and right. work it. YOLO. And, you know, YOLO, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's truth to that, right? right? And... Uh, uh, not to get uh, sort of too somber, but uh, one of the uh, a crystal moment for me, a uh, right. p- pivotal time, was uh, my father's uh, 67th birthday. Okay. And uh, so it was uh, early 2000s, and uh, I took him out for uh, for lunch at his favorite place type of thing. Right. And he was a retired food industry executive. Okay. And uh, we were chatting, and he basically said, well, you don't seem like yourself, and is everything mm-hmm. all right, and all that stuff. And he wasn't really a huggy, warm type person, okay. to be honest. But uh, but he was very close and loved me obviously. Right. But uh, but it, it was an unusual discussion. From uh, and he said, you know, and uh, uh, and I said, yeah, you know, the job's not fun and right. You know, I, I was going uh, through a divorce and all those other things at the time, so it was a stressful time. And then he said, yeah, but you got to do what you love. Like you should be thinking about these types of things, wow. right? You don't want to wake up and be sixty-seven and, th- and think what could have been. Hmm. And then, uh, and so I took the advice to heart and uh, I left the insurance world. And before I, I landed in the music world, um, uh, he passed in, oh. a, in a house fire. And uh, so, so that was sudden. Uh, that was very sudden and quite dramatic. And, uh, and all those things that go with it. Mm. Um, and, and it was obviously a significant loss and, uh, and, and, and the like. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the the nuances of the story are, are quite fascinating uh, in, in the and how I ended up at SoCan. But I end up at SoCan, which mm-hmm. is Canada's uh, uh, performing rights organization, right. and, uh, right. licenses the use of music and compositions on TV and radio and concerts and wow. Netflix and uh, you name it, TikTok mm-hmm. and all of it. And so I arrived there in the early 2000s. And uh, interestingly enough, a lot of parallels to our industry now. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah. So the music industry at that time, early 2000s, it was uh, uh, you know Napster and BitTorrent and Kazaa and LimeWire were around. Yeah, the, um, the yeah. pirating. The pirating and, <laughs> right. uh, and file sharing yeah. and all those types of things. Right, Michael? Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, but the industry, the music industry, was debating on how to handle these types of things. Mm-hmm. And to me, it seemed the so idea... So it was a transition from the CDs. And yeah. <laughs> it, it was a legacy industry that was right. being disrupted right. rapidly. Right. And so new business models, you know, mostly around the licensing of content and right. the use of content... And really building bridges with big tech companies mm-hmm. and other folks, like, you know, the uh, largest iTunes, platforms, iTunes. iTunes, the big platforms now are iTunes, Spotify, right. YouTube, TikTok, mm-hmm. um, Netflix, and and such. Um, and, and so uh, we worked very hard to build models and bridges and relationships with them to license them so they could do it right. legally. Um, I think that, in hindsight, worked out quite well. Mm-hmm. And the uh, music industry now is larger than it ever was as a far greater reach. Right. It's somewhat democratized. There's still issues. Did SoCan, SoCan represent, represent the artists or they represent the platforms? Uh, they represent the artists. Oh, so the, wow, the right. writers and the composers wow. and the uh, and the uh, music publishers. Wow. So the people that actually publish the music mm. and, uh, and make the copyright available. Um, uh, then the, uh, there was other groups that represented the, uh, the tech companies. But, mm-hmm. but we ended up working good relationships with, uh, with the, them as licensees. 
and uh, did a number of initiatives together. And uh, uh, so anyways, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, at that time period. Um, uh, the uh, SOCAN grew and, and developed. When I got there, uh, it was about $120 million in revenue. Right. And, and they were doing five to six million dollars, or sorry, five to six million transactions a year. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time I left uh, in 2021, uh, the revenue was in around $400 million. Wow. And uh, they were doing about 135 million uh, transactions a day. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And at first, you know, your listeners may think, well, well, how's that possible? Well, think of how many times you hear music in a right. given day, you know, uh, in the car or watching yeah. TV or on a podcast and mm-hmm. all those types of things. And, and all those are licensed uh, uh, by SOCAN. Mm-hmm. Uh, SOCAN okay. has about 57 or 60 or so different licensing uh, uh, tariffs uh, that are applicable, ranging from cru- cruise ships to giant software platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, when I did that and, uh, the, uh, the company, uh, had made a number of acquisitions and was right. selling oh. off a, a couple of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the acquisitions of subsidiaries. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, maybe uh, I'm going to pay attention to that and do what I love and not mm-hmm. just go through the motions. Right. Like, like, and I love innovation and transformation mm-hmm. and, and as luck would have it, uh, I, uh, found my way at the real estate board. Wow. So, um, what were you know during that? Because that was such a uh, pivotal time, twenty twenty one. Obviously, uh, during the pandemic, but also uh, a lot of transitions at uh, the Greater Vancouver Realtors, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, or the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, it was yeah, yeah, formerly yeah. known as. Yeah. Uh, with uh, the CEO being Brad Scott. For yeah. how long was Brad? Uh, 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 Brad was CEO for about nine years, right. but, he, but he'd been with the organization uh, 43 years, I believe. Right, yeah. He started when he was 18 or so, yeah. started in the mailroom. It's a classic, you know, work your way to the top. Right. Uh, it feels like a Hollywood movie. Right. Uh, and he did a lot of amazing things. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, I'm following in the footsteps of a number of legendary CEOs for the organization. Right. You know, a lot of the listeners will know Brad and, uh, and of course, uh, Bob Wallace, who's uh, since uh, passed away. Mm-hmm. But Bob was the uh, CEO for a number of years. Right. And uh, and then going further back, Alan Career had been there for mm-hmm. decades, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and uh, they'd done a, a great job in in, uh, in keeping the organization not just relevant, but being a strong service provider right. for the organi- uh, for um, uh, for the members, for the realtors. Mm-hmm. So what did? Uh, but uh, but I was replacing a long line of uh, of folks that have been there a long yeah, time. Yeah, and that uh, there was. I you remember there was a selection committee, and mm-hmm. it was very. Um, you know, they, they were really. Um, Speaking with a, a diverse character, so why did they? Why do you think they selected you, Jeff? Why um, did you get the rose? Yeah. <laughs> You're the bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, if they'll, if I'll accept it. The, uh, um, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I think part of it was was that um, uh, I had experience in in uh, in, in uh, trade associations and member based organizations. Okay. Uh, SoCan's a member based organization right. with 180 thousand or so members. Wow. And representing about four and a half million global folks. So SOCAN represents the world's repertoire. Wow. So there's 180,000 Canadians and about four and a half million people from around the world mm-hmm. that the, that they represented. So I was quite familiar with the model, the association type model. Right. And, uh, and I was able to articulate during the interview process that, you know, operating uh, copyright and uh, intellectual property and providing services to those. You know, SoCan right. didn't create music. You right. know, SoCan just took care of the, help the transactions and made sure that people were treated fairly and there were standards. Um, uh, uh, that had a lot more in common with real estate and real mm-hmm. estate trade association work than you may think on the surface. Mm-hmm. And then so when you start to, uh, when I, I started to articulate it that way, and then frankly, my experience in dealing with the um, digital transformation that happened. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, real estate is about a generation behind. Um, <laughs> right. It, uh, and it's not, always it's, the last one to it, move. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's a variety of reasons for right. it, right? Yeah. Like uh, the, uh, Why do you think that is? Uh, I, I think that uh, it's still a people business. And, the, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, uh, the, the people are still heavily involved. It's a very mm-hmm. personal decision. Mm-hmm. And uh, even, and I'm sure we'll get into some of the technological things that we see coming. Right. But even as we uh, look at those types of things, I think a big part of what my job is, is to ensure that realtors are in the middle of that process. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of see the realtors being like the Sherpa helping someone climb a mountain. Right. Like they're doing it with them. They're not the, you know, the uh, the accolades will go to the person who closes a deal and buys that house or sells a house or the business or whatever it is. But the realtor is a, is a guide and yeah. and uh, and uh, helps with quality control and expertise and and, we'll, and negotiating. We'll carry like heavy bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, yeah. it's it's. Just, I think it's a powerful metaphor. Right. And 
Uh, and so when uh, uh, when I was speaking uh, to the, uh, uh, the the real estate board of Greater Vancouver uh, or RebGV or REBGV, right. depending on right. what day of the week it was, right. um, uh, when I was speaking to the bo- uh, selection committee and ultimately to the board, I was articulating these types of thoughts. Right. That uh, the industry is about to go through this change. Now, part of the reason why I think it's been a little bit uh, behind the others is yes. because it is a complex business, mm-hmm. and it's uh, there's a um, uh, the number of trades uh, is significant, but it's not like the scale of what like what software companies deal right. with. Like we're not talking trillions of lines or any mm-hmm. of this type of stuff. Um, and uh, there's complexity with a number of different stakeholders and, pe- and people having a role in it. You know, the realtor's front and center for people like you and I. Right. But there's mortgage brokers and appraisers. Mm-hmm. and uh, It's like an ecosystem. There's a whole ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the mortgage brokers and, uh, and managing brokers for the, for the realtors, uh, banks and uh, mortgage origination, uh, regulators, mm-hmm. law, uh, legal uh, elements. Uh, there's uh, a greater economic uh, right. piece to it. So it is a bit of a mosaic of, of people dealing with it. And mm-hmm. I, I do like the ecosystem uh, word for it. And so I think it's part of, you, add, you take all that and then you look at the dollars involved. It's a huge part of the British Columbia economy. It, 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 it's it, the number one driver it, of the economy, isn't it? it? it it's a major one. Right. Uh, uh, you know, I think we're still, you know, uh, uh, natural resources is still a major right. component in yeah. the, for British Columbia and for Canada. Right. But real estate's chomping at the heels, you right. know, and uh, and particularly here in the West, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a, a big thing. Th- you know, there's an old saying, uh, you know, uh, if you're not sure what to talk about with a Canadian, you know, they're going to ask, us want to talk about three things: right, weather, real estate, and Kim ho- Kardashian, and ho- <laughs> or, 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 or hockey, usually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you have to be well versed in right. two oh, of the three. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Kim Kardashian's <laughs> always on the radar, <laughs> right. you know. And I'm um, uh, the uh, I got oh, a Kim okay. K story, which I'll get to later. But, <laughs> right. but um, okay, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, but uh, yeah, it is a huge part, and it's a very personal type of thing. Right. Um, but I do think that we're starting to see the begins, beginnings of threads, um, not unlike what happened to travel agents, mm-hmm. not le- unlike what happened to uh, other folks have been disintermediated. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the access to information is greater than ever before, right. including our world, the real mm-hmm. estate world. Absolutely. Right. And uh, and that's been a sea shift. And mm-hmm. uh, that's happened relatively recently in mm-hmm. the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Last five, six years, that's been uh, essentially turbocharged, uh, right. Michael. And and I think that's starting to change how that'll work. And I think AI is the the new uh, the the new hor- high horsepower item that's right. going to enter into this. I, I'm convinced AI will not replace realtors, mm-hmm. but I think realtors using AI will be. Why? Able to, why do you? Why are you convinced of that? Because I, I think people uh, it's still going to be a people business, and you're going to want someone to mm-hmm. come into the house with you and look at it, and uh, and negotiate the deal and all those types of things. Um, but I think the model in Canada, and for most of North America, uh, works well. Uh, other jurisdictions, like the UK, for instance, mm-hmm. a lot of real estate's uh, lawyer-driven, solicitor-driven. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the largest multiple listing services outside of North America is the ESPN, mm-hmm. the Edinburgh uh, Solicitor Property Network. Okay, is right that in yeah. Scotland. In Scotland, yeah, yeah right. mm-hmm. and uh, it's essentially an MLS, but it's uh, it's uh, the uh, driven by the solicitors, right? And the uh, the estate agents, as they call them over there. Um, uh, it will take you around, they'll help with different parts of it, but they're not necessarily negotiating the deal the same way that as North Americans consider it. I mm-hmm. think that's a, an intensely personal element of it, and I think mm-hmm. that's why people will be involved, and I think realtors are doing a good job in engaging it. Mm-hmm. But I do think AI will have a role. And in the way I kind of equate it, you know, a generation or two back, um, uh, you know, when uh, in, in, in the 70s and 80s, mm-hmm. with, with the bookkeeping, People said, well, you know, I want a person, you know, frankly, it was, you know, at that era, almost right. always a man, but I wanted a, a person to look at the numbers and add it up because I yeah. don't trust machines. With a pocket protector. A pocket <laughs> protector and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, right? The green yeah, shield. Yeah. And the, <laughs> exactly. Maybe with an adding machine right, and all yeah, that type totally. of stuff. Um, eventually, those folks uh, started to compete against accountants and bookkeepers who were using Excel and right. Lotus 1, 2, 3 and other tools. And they weren't able to compete and mm-hmm. eventually were superseded, but this became how it got done. Right. I kind of think the same thing's going to happen to lawyers and real, realtors and mm-hmm. others in, in our space. It's going to drive efficiencies. It's going to drive efficiencies. Right. to be yeah. greater sources of information. The secret, the real secret weapon for AI, the real thing that makes it somewhat magical to me is its ability to handle huge volumes of numbers. Right. The huge volumes, more than any human. Yeah. And uh, that, is, uh, that will have a, a, a change. People will still be involved. I, I, I'm convinced realtors will be part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, but realtors using technology 
will likely be able to outperform uh, other realtors in terms of getting listings, in terms of successful close rates, right. satisfied customers, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. It'll be part of, you know, I, th I kind of think and by the end of the decade, by 2030, operating without these types of tools will be like saying today, trying to operate without a mobile phone. Right. It's, yeah. It'll be unimaginable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're not quite there yet. But the early stages are starting to come up. Yeah, I think a lot of people are taking AI as some form of a boogeyman or yeah. like a monster uh, that's going to be, over, be overtake the industry and and take it like a tidal wave. But you know, I think it's it's uh, it comes down to um, you know how we harness that and how we approach the change. Yeah, uh, and uh, still providing value to to the consumer. Ultimately, that's the key element. I think some consumers may feel very very comfortable with a full. AI representative and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, uh, you know, just a bot <laughs> yeah. serving them to sell their property. But, uh, you know, in many cases, specifically, I think in Vancouver is a luxury item it is uh, like a very, very high end. Uh, we're talking about a very high uh, ticket uh, item. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, when the stakes are that high, typically um, like transaction volume is uh, you know, is less, but it's, uh, you know, the, the the dollar figures are so substantial that I think that it's the combination of hybridization of man and machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> to, the to cyborg is yeah, coming. The cyborg, yeah, 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 exactly. The Robocop, yeah. Robo Realtor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 If we end up with Robo Realtors, that's probably better than Terminators who are just <laughs> yeah, hunting for us and, yeah. uh, and that type of thing. But no, I, I, but I'm kind of convinced you're right. I, I've seen some modeling, I've, I've seen some AI work done where people are trying to have AIs negotiate yeah. with each other on, on transactions wasn't specifically around real estate, but it was around transactions in general. And uh, you could definitely tell that there's apprehension right. from the people involved. Like, well, how do I know this is working? They want to be able to look someone in the eyes and say, okay, I want to do this. And your point around this is a big decision for folks. We should not underestimate that. It mm -hmm. is. This mm -hmm. is usually the largest financial decision they're going to make. Yeah. They're going to make it probably four or five times in their lives. Right. But it's a, uh, uh, it's a major, major decision. And mm -hmm. it could have... Uh, incredibly positive or negative impacts if right. it's handled poorly. Right. So and you always need a Sherpa to blame. You need a Sherpa. You need a Sherpa to help you through it right. you know, and, uh, and provide I'm some kidding. liability coverage and, yeah. uh, and all that stuff. But yeah, it because uh, it's a tricky world. And uh, um, but I think uh, I, I do think you're you're right. I, I think the idea of bots doing it, or even like I, I think the first thing we'll see will be around. Um, uh, what we traditionally call search right now, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's going to evolve dramatically right. rapidly. And uh, people will be using ChatGPT and, and other similar mm -hmm, type tools right. saying, I want to look at houses like this. And I think we're going to see an increased awareness around cash flow mm -hmm. and, uh, and a greater emphasis and focus on this analysis work. Yeah. And on cash flow, and on that part, all I really mean is people zeroing in on their monthly cost mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and different maybe uh, financing arrangements, sure. even, even things like uh, different mortgage arrangements and, right. and different things like that. I think it will begin to emerge new mm -hmm. financial models. Mm -hmm. Um, even uh, you know, frankly, uh, uh, neo banking will be part of the story. What what is neo banking? So this is yeah, interesting. To so me. Uh, uh, neo banking, not to be confused with neo credit cards and things. Is which there are, anything like neo pets? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a bizarre way. I think way. of neo. I think of Matrix. <laughs> Matrix. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Well, there's an element of that. The uh, so uh, neo banking essentially is, is in its early days, um, but is uh, when the tech companies right um, provide the financing. And in uh, the platforms, oh, okay, and uh, for mortgages or for car loans or whatever right. uh, financial instruments you're interested in. So not a traditional bank, but right, but, but a company, uh, but a company, and uh, uh, but the neo banking part of it, the banking part of that uh, that word, is uh, um, is really focused around uh, the uh, uh, the the tech companies, frankly, mm -hmm. the fangs, the you know, the Facebook, Amazon, uh, uh, Netflix, Google, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the world. Um, you know, working can they with scare, can they like have a like a less sinister yeah <laughs> like acronym yeah I, 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 yeah <laughs> I, I, uh, I think branding is probably not their strong suit <laughs> yeah. on that one but uh, the uh, yeah. suck you dry <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's got a bit of a vampire yeah, feel a vampire to it vampire feel yeah, yeah. Uh, well uh, Mark Zuckerberg has a little bit of a like a uh, <laughs> like a translucent <laughs> there's definitely yeah. a, a number of memes around the reptilian uh, nature <laughs> yeah, exactly. of the of this stuff um, but but those companies are. They're definitely huge, right? Uh, with incredibly powerful balance sheets, right? Right. They're uh, uh, deeper and stronger balance sheets than virtually any bank on earth. 
Um, but banking in uh, in North America is is heavily regulated. Yes. Uh, in uh, uh, in the, there are different models. Canada and U.S. have different models, but mm-hmm. the general concepts are similar. Um, and uh, I we're starting to see the beginnings of these uh, of this neo banking things happening, mostly in the United States right now. Mm-hmm. So Apple's done uh, is doing work with Goldman Sachs, so you can get car loans and uh, and uh, a, a Apple credit card. Mm. It's on uh, Goldman Sachs paper, but wow. uh, Apple's providing the financial horsepower behind it, mm. and uh, th- that's a large financial institution that's trying to embrace working with technology. Mm. I think those types of things will be in the Canadian marketplace probably sooner than we wow. think, and that'll change the dynamic because will be international companies or can, do you think Canadian local? Yeah, I, I think Canadian. I, I can, you know, I can't speak for the Canadian banks, but I think the Canadian banks would be wise to be looking right. to explore these types of things. Uh, they're the, the Canadian banks are competing in the global world now, mm-hmm. and uh, the uh, the regulation which has helped the Canadian consumer mm-hmm. uh, to a large degree um, could also end up being a, you know uh, a hindrance mm-hmm. to uh, to affordability or access to funds and different things like that. Mm-hmm. And I know that the Canadian Banking Association is looking at different ways to help move this forward. Open banking is part of the conversation. Um, open banking. Open banking, which is uh, is more transparency around uh, mm-hmm. what's happening. It's kind of an offshoot of uh, you know blockchain and crypto type of right. work. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's not necessarily connected to that, sure. but it came sort of out of that universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of work, some experimental work being done by the big banks on that front. Mm-hmm. But I, I think the real for me, the real uh, thing that's going to turbocharge it is the neo banking, which is the tech companies mm-hmm. getting into the middle of right. it, and uh, will start to change the dynamic of it. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some really creative ways that uh, banking could be approached. Yeah, and it, I'm convinced without those regulations, though, isn't there like isn't it suspect to a lot of fraudulent behavior from like you know obviously there's all those uh, you know yeah cryptocurrencies that you know irregular spending from a CEO to like yep. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the uh, absolutely the, yeah, the Sam Bankman Freed or all that kind of stuff yes exactly you know it uh, uh, it's one of those uh, the FTX and and uh, Sam Bankman Freed and the and the backstory there is uh, an alarming tale mm-hmm. right and uh, and when you look at it there was a number of very smart experienced people involved right and uh, the, but when you start hearing about people getting financial advice from a woodland elf. <laughs> right. You start to wonder, like, where were the grownups? Like, mm-hmm. what was going on here? Mm-hmm. And uh, that is troubling. I'm somewhat fascinated by that whole experience. Mm-hmm. Um, FTX is not the only one. There's others that have had some challenges. Right. Uh, and I think there probably is a role for crypto uh, in, in the uh, in the uh, world marketplace. Mm-hmm. But I think it might be different than what uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Satoshi uh, Nakamoto maybe thought mm-hmm. <laughs> originally. Um, because... Uh, we're going to need checks and balances, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, the you know the not just to uh, protect the c- citizens uh, individually, right, but also society at, at large. You know, uh, money laundering and uh, um, uh, human trafficking and proceeds of crime mm-hmm. and all those types of things have to be managed, and we have to stomp that out somehow. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, uh, uh, I think that the regulations uh, are, are probably need to catch up a bit on mm-hmm. how to handle that. Mm-hmm. Uh, my personal view on crypto is that uh, it'll begin to be more uh, fulsomely regulated, mm-hmm. likely starting in the United States and and, and the EU, uh, the mm-hmm. European Union. Um, but then Canada and other large economies will start to follow. Uh, and I, I think that'll you know, be sort of a, a, a transition that we'll begin to see. But you're right. the gar- It often comes down to governance, right? You know, right. and, and uh, how I'm not it evolves. How, yeah, that's how it evolves, right? And so, mm-hmm. governance is the key to being successful in these things, mm-hmm. including around the trust and predictability about it. Mm-hmm. One of the things I think FTX got in trouble with was weak governance. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, the, there's I, I know there's a movie being made on it. Right. Uh, there's books on it already. Um, but when you look at how they were approving billion dollar loans with emojis on right. on uh, smart on, on, on the, Slack on yeah, Slack yeah, yeah exactly they're sending you know the dollar sign and thumbs they, up yeah and they used uh, like Google Drive Excel or whatever yeah, <laughs> to, like yeah. do their whole uh, yeah. yeah 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 it's it's alarming the whole financial uh, yeah it, it's very alarming and uh, so you know yeah. it's a it's a, a lesson there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then of course uh, you, you alluded to you know the uh, the other elements like the sort of the Ponzi scheme type ideas mm-hmm. and those are other things that we have to be careful of right uh, you know it, it's not just real estate related it's all you know our uh, economic system related mm-hmm. but uh, the uh, the 
there is a role for the regulator. There is a role mm-hmm. there to be the sort of the policeman to sort of keep these things in check. Right. And to provide that safety net so that it's not just the Wild West. Mm-hmm. As appealing as that may sound, you know, the Wild West did have issues with crime and mm-hmm. other things, right? Until Wyatt Earp came. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Until the sheriff came into right? town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it's like, okay, settle down, everybody, right? right? So, yeah. But, uh, but I, I do think the real estate industry and, uh, and the money connected to it um, is starting to evolve rapidly. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing the rise in technology and, and, uh, and a different foray in, in what's commonly kind of called the prop tech world, the mm-hmm. property technology mm-hmm. Uh, uh, world. There's a number of prop tech companies, uh, some more successful than others, right. but the, the green shoots are there mm-hmm. and uh, it's starting to evolve kind of rapidly. When I got here, uh, uh, I was very excited, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, what were you most excited for? Uh, 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 the uh, the data and the business opportunities. Right. You know, and so I saw an industry is undergoing a transformation and I thought, boy, I can hardly wait to get my hands on that MLS data. Mm-hmm. That's going to be worth. That's worth a lot of money. It can mm-hmm. be really transformative to the realtor experience, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, and it could be commercialized. Right. And then when I started looking at it, I realized it was not uh, really too much in the way uh, standards in the way that I was used to. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was uh, how so uh, a lot of inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, free form, for, uh, uh, open form uh, fields where people mm-hmm. just put in what they want. Right. Um, it was hard to mine. The technology of the industry right. was somewhat dated, including yeah. RevGV. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, RevGV had a, a data technologies platform. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it did the job well. And for the late 90s, early 2000s, mm-hmm. it was pretty good. But essentially what it was, uh, Michael, was the binders from the ni- early 90s yep. was put online. Right. And people dusted their hands and said, here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a number of different things that uh, that could evolve from that. Mm-hmm. So the, the, we spent the last couple of years working to modernize and streamline uh, our internal uh, IT int- uh, infrastructure. And we have an architecture now that's much more scalable and able mm-hmm. to do different things. And uh, next month, we're going to be launching uh, an economics microsite Mm-hmm. Uh, that will have data packs and different products and services uh, for our members and mm. ultimately for other stakeholders uh, on a subscription basis. But uh, for the members, it'll be free. Right. Uh, where they can pull out and look at different uh, uh, different data stacks and uh, at different uh, you know, neighborhood-related things. Right. And, d- and look at the information in different ways. Mm-hmm. I think there's huge value there. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and I think that uh, that part I'm, I'm very excited yeah, about. Yeah, when you can, when you can uh, break down the numbers and uh, provide a more comprehensive analysis to, uh, to someone to make... You know, real estate has typically been a, a fairly emotional uh, decision for most people. Absolutely. But yep. when we're able to back it with data and and uh, and um, able to make build yeah. the rationale in, uh, you yeah. know, so we're not just working on the soft side, but we have some elements of building uh, hard data into our into mm. our presentations and programs. I think that pr- provides tremendous value and comfort yeah. to uh, to the public that they're making the right decision. And yeah, spot on. I I, I agree totally. It uh, it is largely emotion driven mm-hmm. still, right? And yep. people got in I, and. They, and you know the the magic words. I can see myself living here. Right. And when you hear that, then you think, okay, we got something going. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the more data and information, inc- you know, the obvious one is like other comps, other things. Mm-hmm. Like, am I getting fair value, both the seller and the and the buyer? But the other parts are like the longer term view of it. Right. Yeah. You know, and the all macro. The, 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 yeah. The yeah, macro. Outlook. All that. All that type of stuff. And and I think that uh, those types of elements. Uh, will, um, uh, are great and are mm-hmm. going to be much stronger in mm-hmm. the next eighteen months. Yeah. You mentioned. Uh, like the the value of this data. Mm-hmm. So how do you um, extract value from the the data, or like the extract, like yeah, yeah. The, the uh, uh, so uh, the in essence, mm-hmm. uh, and sort of the uh, uh, in, in my uh, uh, well-meaning amateur point of view, the uh, um, uh, the economics one one of it is that the real value is in rich data. Mm-hmm. And so when you're packing, packing rich data, enriched data, enriched data, enriched data. Enriched okay. data. So you, you you take the information and it's like this house, this address, this price, mm-hmm. and so, um, and then you 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 layer in like some of the features, size of it, uh, south facing, uh, parking, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but the enriched data is how that what that means in context, mm-hmm. and then I think that's where the real value is. Okay, and uh, um, uh, I think the early customers will likely be. Um, uh, you know, uh, obviously, realtors looking for competitive advantage mm-hmm. and for additional information. But I think the banks, the insurance companies, I think some consumer products companies will mm-hmm. be interested. Right. 
you know, when the music industry began to uh, collect uh, what what they called enriched data, mm -hmm. uh, the first consumers of that, the first buyer, the first product, uh, the first customers were the large consumer mm -hmm. uh, brands, Johnson and Johnson and Procter and Gamble mm -hmm. and things like that, because they wanted to see what people were doing. Right. And uh, um, I, I had the good fortune of speaking on a panel at South by Southwest several years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was about data and, and commercialization of it and mm -hmm. sort of the future of the, of the industry. And also on the panel was an executive from uh, one of the consumer products companies. And uh, in the green room beforehand, I introduced myself and I was mm -hmm. chatting with her. And and uh, um, uh, she knew who the, I worked for, but didn't know me. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, and I said, well, we're thrilled to have you as a customer and, and uh, this is great and everything. And I said, you know, I was kind of surprised that the uh, consumer products folks were the mm -hmm. first ones to show up. Like mm -hmm. some of this information you can get from licensing bodies in, right. uh, in ma every major city Van uh, has a licensing body for new businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and Vancouver's ahead of the curve on that. They have one for new media mm -hmm. and, uh, and for media and one for traditional businesses. Right. You know, New York, Toronto do similar ideas. Um, uh, and, uh, and they were mostly looking for that type of opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, you can get this stuff for free publicly. Right. And she said, well, you know, the reality is, I was, uh, my, my team was prepared to prepare uh, uh, reports and things, bespoke to them, enriched some early analysis. Mm -hmm. And it, they was plug it in and basically turned over to their distributors and mm -hmm. their salespeople. The different government bodies just sort of said, here's a, here's a giant uh, CSV file, have at it. Right. And I thought, oh, there's value in doing some pre-work. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing goes for the real estate board and for the other stakeholders in, uh, in the real estate industries. Mm -hmm. The, the boards operate the MLSs. There's a huge treasure trove of information there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also Realtor.ca, right. uh, which uh, uh, which CREA owns. And of course, uh, as uh, as members of CREA, we have a, a stake in it uh, sure. that way. Um, but, uh, but that gives a national perspective. And mm -hmm. I think there's a, a tremendous potential there on, the, on, sort of a, on an even bigger scale. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot to digest. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm very that, passionate about no, this stuff. And, and I, that I, is, I, yeah, but it, yeah, it's, it, you yeah. know, it's obviously in the horizon, and it's great yeah. to have uh, people on, you know, uh, that have the uh, foresight and to to be able to think of these considerations uh, coming up and how we can, you know, either uh, commercialize or monetize the the data points and and how we can serve our our. Um, uh, our members better. Uh, ultimately, that's the the. Key. That's why we're here. Yeah, that's the key to it all, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my uh, uh, my uh, my good friend uh, Trevor Coot has a, mm -hmm. has a line uh, about the BCR. He's the CEO of the uh, British Columbia Real Estate Association, right. and uh, uh, he often says that uh, uh, their members, uh, which are the real estate boards of uh, of British Columbia, mm -hmm. and by extension, really the the, the realtors on the right. ground, he said that uh, may not think about BCRA every day. Mm -hmm. But the BCRA staff think of the members every day. Mm -hmm. And I love that turn of phrase. I think mm -hmm. it's brilliant. And uh, and that is our focus. Our focus right. is entirely on the the realtors and the, and the brokers. And right. uh, and I think there's uh, I think we do a great job on some elements of it. I think there's some areas where we really want to improve and really make some… Uh, what uh, areas do you want to improve? Yeah, uh, perfect segue. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think there's a couple areas of, uh, of uh, uh, real gains we can make. One is around the user experience, uh, mm -hmm. and around the the the, the uh, engagement, UI, yeah. the UI, the UI of the uh, the MLS platform, and mm -hmm. and sort of the the the, the bolts and uh, nuts and bolts of how to do their business. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a lot of work with our supplier uh, Paragon to improve mm -hmm. that. And there'll be some stuff coming out later this year that will be mobile uh, uh, friendly and uh, and responsive design. I mm -hmm. think people will really like it. Um, I think there's a number of data things that we're working on, which I alluded to. The mm -hmm. economics microsite coming out in March will be exciting. Um, but I also uh, we also want to look at different ways to uh, improve the experience on the uh, non MLS elements, like mm -hmm. education and lobbying and different work like that. So in the education, we're working through a, a new way of approaching it with a, a vision towards having uh, uh, members be able to select and have a learning path of what they want to follow. And be able to self serve and handle it uh, uh, through a, a website and mm -hmm. essentially build a passport and say, I, I want to take this course and this course and that course. And ultimately, what I kind of see happening, uh, Michael, is moving towards a certification program. Mm. So you become certified in, uh, as an expert in land assembly right. or strata or commercial or something mm -hmm. like that. We're working very closely with the CCIM, the Commercial Association, mm -hmm. 
and uh, and uh, helping support them with their courses. They've got some fantastic courses right. that, that, that they do. But I think there's a whole number of different things mm-hmm. like that. You know, uh, um, so get, uh, get some designations. Designations some, and things yeah, like that. Right. I think that would be a game changer. I think that would be ex- uh, uh, excellent sort of value for, uh, proposition right. for the members. And then in terms of like the broad scope of it, there are a couple other things that I think that we've not been the strongest on that we've really... I have to make sure that we get better at. Mm-hmm. And those are threefold. Uh, rentals, mm-hmm. um, uh, managing brokers, mm-hmm. our support for the managing brokers in, the, in that community, which is an important uh, subset, and commercial, commercial real mm-hmm. estate. Um, uh, the commercial real estate is it uh, operates on a slightly different model. Right, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's not slightly different. It's much yeah, different. Yeah, night and day different. It's yeah. night and day difference. Yeah. And, uh, and I think there's some things that uh, the Greater Vancouver uh, uh, Realtors, GVR, the association, can do to help support mm-hmm. uh, commercial. Our, our work with CCIM is right. part of that. But, um, uh, but I think there's other things we can do too, including uh, uh, you know, helping them build different uh, reports and, and having access to information. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's uh, because of the nature of it and the nature of the buyers and sellers. There's a different level of sophistication. Mm-hmm. Generally, it's a broad statement, but generally, if someone's buying a four hundred million dollar office tower, sure. it's different than if someone's buying a four hundred thousand dollar house. Mm-hmm. I get that, right? But uh, but they have different needs, and I think there's different things that we can do. And there's probably uh, I think there's some scale that we can provide mm-hmm. to help these people be more successful and mm-hmm. uh, and how they manage those types of things. Is is the is Transparency, something that you want to kind of uh, improve on the commercial side, because that's always the big complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from yeah. a public and a, a pri- like private perspective. So the the there's a couple of uh, uh, elements to unpack there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, in residential real estate, uh, uh, Vancouver was the uh, f- uh, first large real estate board in, in Canada to put on previously sold prices on to Realtor.ca mm-hmm. to provide that extra transparency and trust. Uh, so that people look at it and say, okay, here's the history of it and those types of things. This is publicly available information. Right. You can find it elsewhere, right? I'll, I'll get to commercial in a second, mm-hmm. but you can find it elsewhere. But we wanted to be, get ahead of it and embrace the transparency about it because it's a relationship, mm-hmm. right? And uh, like all relationships are built on trust mm-hmm. and they built up over time and they can be destroyed rapidly. Right. You know, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, this, the psychologist will often, you know, you'll, you'll think of the example like, if you're in a relationship or with a, a spouse or if you're uh, dating someone or something like that, and say, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to have dinner Friday night. It's going to be great, all the rest right. of it. And then you show up at 2 a.m. and they say, where were you? And you say, never mind. Mm-hmm. That's not going to help trust. Right. Right. And so you want to have a, a thing say, no, I, uh, I had to stay late. I'm working on this. Right. Or all the rest of it. Same goes for uh, on, uh, on, in real estate. Mm-hmm. If someone says, well, you know, what's the uh, pricing model on this? Mm-hmm. Or what's the, uh, the uh, occupancy rate? Right. Or what did this place sell for before? How much did it cost to build? Uh, some of it's available, some of it's not. We want to work in different ways to package that. On on residential, we're doing different things now to increase the transparency. Mm-hmm. In commercial, there are some competitive elements that we have to be respectful of. That uh, um, what are those elements? So someone maybe not maybe will not want their competitors to know that they're looking to put the business up for sale, mm-hmm. or to have their books uh, be viewed by a competitor. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, and uh, not off, not always, but a lot of times in commercial, uh, there's either a business connected to it, um, or a different uh, uh, different cash flow elements to mm-hmm. it that have, uh, that are commercially sensitive, mm-hmm. and so we need to respect that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the post transaction, there's different ways to to, uh, to uh, examine these things to provide guidelines. It may not be full, complete transparency because that could be unhelpful to the end client, mm-hmm. but it could be enough to so that it's directionally correct and that there's a, a trust and faith in the system. Right. And so we're work, we want to work that fine line and work with the commercial realtors mm-hmm. uh, community about finding a way to to try to thread that needle. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, especially when there's uh, uh, kind of conventions and things that have been done for, you know, decades. 30, 40 decades, years. Yeah. And, and you know, it's hard to kind of break that uh, shell. Uh, but, uh, you know, from an outward, from a kind of public perspective, and I'm not saying that this is my perspective, but, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, when uh, agents, or agents and commercial brokers uh, have uh, some elements of self-serving behavior for mm. the reasons why that they keep things less transparent, um, that's always been kind of the... Um, outward, somewhat of the outward perspective, uh, and you know, and we've that's been greeted with, well, that's too bad because that's the way it is. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so there's uh, there's elements of that. So I think there's a lot to tackle there for mm-hmm. sure, and especially um, 
a lot of the large commercial firms are uh, international firms as Absolutely. well, which uh, provides complexity. So there's uh, not a lot of um, in well, there are a few independent commercial brokerages or uh, mm-hmm. Canadian-based commercial brokerages, but many of them are based out of New York or California or so so on and so forth. Right? Yeah, well said, and yeah. Uh, uh, and and even like and in, in the folks doing the transactions, right? You know, large REITs or large yeah. pension plans or or publicly traded companies, things sure. like that. A, a much different clientele and focus, absolutely, than uh, than the others. Yeah, that's yeah, spot fan- on. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I just to rewind again about the uh, the the choice and the succession planning. Uh, mm, for, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah. to um, to kind of embrace this role. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, um, I I'm just curious. So why did the uh, uh, why did they pick me? Yeah, why no? Why did they pick someone outside of the industry? Like, oh. so that's kind of an interesting. Um, I, um, uh, I love my job. Right. I, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this, mm-hmm. and I find it quite interesting. Sure. Um, and, and I'm extremely proud that the uh, the uh, I'm proud that the board selected me, and 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 I was right. a successful candidate. But if it wasn't me, uh, I would have hoped it would have been an outside person. Mm. Because um, uh, the industry is very uh, insular, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of uh, essentially gatekeeping, right? You know, and so it, it's a, a largely closed ecosystem, mm-hmm. you know. And so when I look at the other uh, CEOs across the country, I've met all ninety of them now, mm-hmm. and I've met about forty or so of the largest boards in the United States or MLS operators right. and boards in the United States. A huge proportion of them uh, come from within the industry. Right. They're former realtors. What or percentage s- would you say? Like 90. 90. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would yeah. say so. Yeah. So yeah. it's a very unique selection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, they're, they're, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, and and there's a certain pattern that happens mm-hmm. when you start to do that. Right. There's a, a, a often you you can end up where uh, there's a drive towards protecting the status quo because of familiarity mm-hmm. and comfort level, and this is the way we do it, and those types of things. Uh, the uh, the change agent you need to, an outside force to do it. Mm-hmm. So uh, and I've said this to the uh, uh, the GVR board of directors. Uh, you know I'm I'm glad I'm thrilled that I was selected. But if it wasn't me, I'm glad they were thinking of someone like me at mm-hmm. least because I think that's healthy and and helpful to be able to do it to bring a, a, an outside perspective. And if you if you can find someone who has the uh, uh, you know, expertise with the similar types of challenges, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, you, then I think that's more successful. I, I, I frankly, I, I think managing most businesses, uh, there's a lot of incredible detail uh, that's involved, and each industry's got its own nuances. Right. But the broad scope of uh, being the senior executive at uh, at most companies is very, very similar. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about strategy, risk mitigation, um, innovation, and, and technology development, and the and the sort of the pest, like mm-hmm. the political, economic, social, technology matrix you're working mm-hmm. with. Um, I. Uh, uh, I often would tell my family I kind of felt I could be parachuted into most industries and mm-hmm. do okay. Uh, I'm quite proud of the of mm-hmm. the success that the uh, GVRs had in the last mm-hmm. little while, and I, I I feel somewhat vindicated in that statement. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean I know everything. It means I've got a lot to learn, but I'm trying to look at things with fresh eyes yeah. and uh, new ways of approaching it. So, how has the reception been for you, Jeff? So far, have they been kind of like uh, um, warm and welcoming, or kind of like, hey? Back off. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the staff, I'll start with the staff and the board have been incredibly supportive. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, uh, uh, to the point where I, I feel the, uh, the the attachment and and uh, affection uh, that uh, that they have with me, it's palpable. Wow. You know, and uh, and that motivates me to want to, to, to do even better and do more and move faster. I want to move as fast as the organization can withstand. Because mm-hmm. I do think there's an advantage. I think, the speed of business is a real thing. Right. Right. There's a speed of sound, speed of light, you know, mm-hmm. and there's a speed of business. And just like sound and light, there's a limit to how, what that is, right? For light, it's 186,000 miles per second. Mm-hmm. And for businesses, the limit is kind of the speed of what the is the company or the ecosystem can handle. Mm-hmm. If you go too fast, it blows up. Right. If you, uh, but if you go close to the edge, you can mm-hmm. accomplish a lot very, very quickly. So the we'll call it internally, mm-hmm. the feedback has been, is, is the support has been amazing, and I'm so proud of everyone mm-hmm. I work with, and uh, and I want to make them proud of me. <laughs> <laughs>